Amen, amen. What a powerful time of prayer and worship, amen? Amen. Well, if you can find your seats tonight, we're gonna dive into the word and see what the Lord wants to speak to us to continue to, to do things in our hearts. And, and just as we were worshiping, I believe that, that there's kind of been a theme that's been going on through the worship, through the words you've been singing to God. I believe there's a theme that's going to be happening tonight through the scriptures that we're gonna take a look at, and you're gonna see how this is going to apply to your life. Well, tonight, if you, if you don't know who I am and I don't know who you are, my name is, is Tim, and, and uh, I have the privilege of being the Deer Valley Campus Pastor, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and my family, we have had the, the amazing opportunity to be here for, for the past eight years. We've had the amazing opportunity to call, to call Radiant Church our home. You know, this has been our home church, and, and we're so thankful for it, and we've seen God do great things here. But, you know, I can tell you, I believe God is getting ready to do even greater things than we've seen. So church, I can tell you, if you don't believe it and don't know it, you need to be start believing it and start trusting it because it's gonna happen. So continue to pray for our amazing pastors, Pastor Hope, Pastor Cade, and as they continue to lead Radiant Church into the great things that God's got in store for us. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, hey, so, so this weekend we, 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 we honored and we remembered 9-11, uh, the events that took place on September 11th, 2001. And, and as we were reflecting on that day and what took place 21 years ago, that, that really for many of us, it's implanted in our brains of exactly where we were, what we were doing, what was happening in our lives at that moment in time. As we were thinking about that, I came across a story. And there's a story that was told by several survivors that survived from the South Tower. And these survivors, they tell of a, of a courageous young man. They didn't know who he was. They didn't know his name. They didn't know anything about him. All they knew was this was a man who had a red bandana around his face that covered his mouth and covered his nose. And as, as the fires were happening in, in the building in the South Tower, all they remember is this, this young man screaming and telling people, I found the stairway, follow me. And so he, he led many people, groups of people, to the stairwell and led them down flights and flights of stairs. There's even one lady that, that said that she was so badly hurt that he threw her over, her over his back and he carried her down 17 flights of stairs so her, for her to find safety. And then he got to the bottom and he, and he set her down and he encouraged other people to come along and, and pick her up and continue to help her the rest of the way down. And he turned around and he ran back up the flights of stairs to continue to go into the different floors and rooms and tell people, I found the stairs, come follow me. Now they, again, they didn't know who this guy was, they didn't know his name, they just knew that it was the man with the red bandana. And all they knew is this man, after he was saving people, he would just disappear back off into the room through the smoke, through the mess, and through the chaos. They never saw this young man again until six months later. Six months later on March 19th, 2002, as they were digging up the rubble of 110 floors of rubble that had fallen to the ground, they found the man with the red bandana. And he was laying beside firefighters. And he was laying in an area of the South Tower where they had put together and they made it their, their makeshift command center. And as they found him and, and stories started to evolve of who, of who this man was and it, it, we found out who he was, his name was Wells Crowther. And Wells Crowther, he, he was a man, he was 24 years old. And he was, he was known you know, in high school that he, he was a junior firefighter. He wanted to be a firefighter just like his dad, following his dad's footsteps. And then he went to Boston College and where he played the cross. And that's where he made the, the famous red bandana node. That was his trademark thing of that's what he did. That's where he, what he wore. That's what he had on him all of the time was this red bandana. And so not long before the events that took place on 9-11, his dad said that he had a conversation with him. And Wells was telling his dad, he said, Dad, I don't know how much longer I can do this job. I feel like my life is meant for so much more than this. I feel like my life is meant for a purpose. I feel like my life is meant to do more. And right now, I just don't think I'm doing it, Dad. I don't know how much longer I can be doing this. You see, he, when he graduated, he was working and doing trades up on the, the 104th floor 
of the, of the trade tower. And, and that specific day when, when he was saying, I, Dad, I feel like I, I'm meant for more, he said his dream was to be a firefighter or to be a public servant. Well, that day on 9-11, he did both of those things. He was a firefighter, he was a public servant, but he was also a hero because he went up when other people were coming down. That's right. You know, when I think about that story, and as I think about Wells, it makes me think of us. How many of us in this room have ever thought or may even be thinking tonight, right now, is my life worth this? Is, is there more to my life? Is there, is there more of a purpose for my life? Is there more out there for me to be living and doing than I'm not doing right now? Or maybe you're a Christian in this room tonight and you remember the day that you asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. But if you're honest, since that moment, since that night, since that day, whenever that time was for you, maybe you haven't really done much with that. And because of that, you've sort of lost your love, you've lost your passion, and you've lost your joy for loving God the way you did on that day. Or maybe you're sitting in here tonight and you're asking the question, does God love me? Does he even know who I am? Does he even care about me? Well, tonight we're gonna answer those questions. So tonight, how do I find that joy again? How do I find that passion again? How do I find that purpose again, Pastor Tim? And, and, and what is my purpose in life? And, and Pastor Tim, does God really love me? The answer is yes, and you're gonna hear about that here in just a moment. So if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, the title for tonight's message is very simply one word, redeemed. It's redeemed. And as we take a look at the verses tonight, we're gonna be taking a look at, at 1 Peter, continuing on in our study in 1 Peter. We're gonna see 1 Peter, and we're gonna be looking at chapter one, verses 18 through 21. Three very, very simple verses, but very powerful verses that we're gonna take a look at. And here, when we see these verses, we're gonna see Peter reminding the people that he's writing to, reminding them of the very thing that God wants to remind you of tonight. So if you're ready to get into it, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, come on, there's more of you in this room. Are you ready? ready. All right, here we go. So the first thing that Peter reminded his readers and the, the, the people he's writing to of, the first thing he reminded them of was he reminded them, uh, reminded them what they were. He reminded them what they were. Now, last week, remember what we saw last week in 1 Peter and the verses we took a look at last week, where Peter was writing to them and he was calling people to a holy living. He was challenging them to change their life and, call, and raise up the standard of the life that they were living. He was saying these different things, and starting in verse 13, he was saying this. He said, so, so prepare your minds for action. And he was telling people to exercise self-control. And then he was telling them to put all of your hope in your gracious salvation. And then in, down in verse 14, he continued on. He said, so, so you must be people that live as God's obedient children. And I love this. He says, don't slip back into your old ways of living. So Peter's encouraging them, don't slip back to those old ways, those things that, that are there to satisfy your own desire. And then in verse 15, he says, but now you must be holy in everything you do. You see, Peter was calling them up. He was challenging them. He was encouraging them to keep on going, to live this kind of life. But then he follows up this challenge. He follows up this calling to holy living with verse 18. And it says this, for you know, that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life that you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It's almost as if Peter was telling them, guys, you, you need to do these things. You need to live this life. You need to go about doing your life. Put away those things that pull you back. Don't go near those things again. Don't go near those selfish desires all over again. Stay away from those things. I'm challenging you and calling you to live a higher life. Why? Because of the ransom that God paid for you to save you from the empty life that you were living. I mean, it was a reminder to them saying, guys, don't go do those things again. Don't you understand the price that was paid for you? 
You see, they understood this. When he was saying that he paid the ransom, you see, they understood that, that language of slaves of, of, and what it means to be bought from their, bought from their slavery, to, to have their freedom again. You know, they understood that language. They understood what it meant. But I love those words, to save you from the empty life. How many people in this room tonight remember when God saved you from your empty life? Now, come on, this is a time to testify. How many people remember when God saved you from those sinful life that you were living, that sinful, empty life, that life that you thought was going to give you hope, that life that you thought would bring you happiness, but it didn't. It brought you emptiness and God saved you. Do you remember when God saved you from that addiction that you had and you didn't know how you would break it because of God's grace and his love and his freedom? He set you free. He broke those chains of bondage over your life. Do you remember that empty life you were living and he broke you free from those things? Breaks you free from the empty life of of pride, of selfishness, of your addictions, of your bad habits, all of those things to make you the man and the woman that you are now. Do you remember those moments? Because you see, when you remember what he's done in your life, when you remember how he saved you from that empty life you were living, then you're able to appreciate the sacrifice that Jesus did for you. It brings a whole different meaning to you. It helps you see it in a whole different way. So what what price did Jesus pay for me? Well, you see, that's the second reminder that Peter was telling his people. The second reminder that that Peter told them was he reminded them of what Christ did. You see, in verse 19, he says this, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. He's saying the things that, what saved you from that empty life, it wasn't gold, it wasn't silver, it wasn't material things. Do you know how much your life is worth? Do you know how, how valuable you are? Your life means so much to God that it cost him the precious blood of Christ. It cost him the life of his son. Now see, remember who's writing this now though. We're talking about Peter. Peter, he, he was there. You know, Peter, Peter saw all of this. Peter was there. He watched all of this stuff with his own eyes. Peter watched, he was there the night when Jesus was was in the garden and he was being led away to be arrested. Peter was there, he saw Jesus when when he was on trial and and as Jesus was walking away, I love that verse where it says, where, where Peter and Jesus, they locked eyes across the courtyard. Peter was there, he saw it. Now, we don't have facts. We don't know if if Peter was there the day when when Jesus was being crucified, but we do know that Peter was there, and he touched the scars in the hands of Jesus' feet and his hands. He touched those things. He saw those things. He experienced those things with his own life. You see, Jesus paid your ransom, my ransom. He paid our ransom with his own life blood so that we can break free from the sins of our lives, to break free from the bondages of our lives so that we can be free and be free indeed. I mean, aren't you thankful that you're free from those destructive behaviors that all they do is lead you down and and drag you down and, and, and to lead you to nothing but death? I mean, aren't you thankful for those things? You see, Jesus, he took our place. He took our place and paid a price that we could not do. He did something for us that we could not do on our own. He gave up his life so that you and I could have life. See, there's a a quote by a Puritan. His name is Thomas Watson, and it says this. It says, great was the work of creation, but greater the work of redemption. It cost more to redeem us than to make us. In the one, there was but the speaking of a word. In the other, the shedding of blood. The creation was but the work of God's fingers, but redemption is the work of his arm. Do you know how valuable you are? Do you know how valuable you are to God? You are so valuable to God that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth, to die on the cross, a pure, sinless, spotless lamb 
who lived a life of love and compassion and giving and leading and teaching lived that life only to be mocked and ridiculed and spit on and beaten and hung on a cross. He gave up his son to do that for us, for his son to pour out his precious blood for you and me. You see, and when we realize this, when we realize how valuable we are to God, then it begins to change the way we see ourselves, right? We begin to see who we are and, and, and how we view ourselves in light of who God says that we are. So how valuable am I? How valuable are you? You see, that's the third reminder that Peter was telling his writers he says, this is how valuable you are. And so he reminded them of this. The third reminder is he reminded them when God made his plan. You see, this is how valuable you are to God. You see, in verse 20, it says this. It says, God chose him as your ransom long before, what's this say? The world began, right? See, a Deer Valley, I, people interact with me, okay? You know, like, like, like I don't, you know, like, like, this isn't just a one-way street. This is, this is a teaching class, okay? So God chose him, God chose you, okay, as your ransom long before the world even began. God chose, he, he, he sent his son Jesus. The whole plan of what he was going to do was set in motion long before the world even began. The creator of the world, all-knowing, all-powerful creator of the world had you in mind from the very, very beginning. You see, that's how valuable you are, that he knew you by name before the world even began. And he sent his son, Jesus, to save you for individually here, but also for eternity. And what you need to know, and, and the reminder is this, is that your life, it's not random. There is not a single person in this room, there's not a single person that's watching online that your life was a mistake or that your life was random or that you shouldn't even be walking on this earth right now or maybe you shouldn't even be living anymore. None of those things. All of that stuff is lies straight from the enemy, straight from the pit of hell. Every single one of you is made for a purpose. You are made by, for, by the creator, the God who created all of these things. He created you for a reason and a purpose. You're not a mistake. He loves you. He created you. Do you know the Bible? It, it, it says that he knows the numbers of hair on your head, right? I, I, I think I was, telling, I was telling somebody the other day, that's why I'm receding hairline right now. I'm losing mine because God's got so many other things to worry about with me if he can keep on not losing track of my hair, right? So, so I keep losing hair so he doesn't have to think of another thing about me, you know? He knows the number of hair on your head. He knows you by name. He created you. There is a purpose and a plan for every single one of you. Believe that. Know that with all of your heart. You see, and that was Peter's reminder to them. So that's how valuable you are. From the very beginning of time, God created you. God knew you would be right here in Radiant Church tonight. So tonight, maybe this is your first time coming into the church tonight. And you're wondering, I'm not even sure why I'm here tonight. Or, or maybe you're watching online tonight and you don't know why you're watching a service online. Somebody told you you should check out my church and, and click on this link and, and watch our prayer service tonight. You need to know if this is your first, th this is not an accident that you're here tonight. God's brought you here tonight. God's got you watching online tonight, if not for anything, but to know how much he loves you, how much he has a plan for you, how he created you and how he loves you with all of his heart. Do you know that and believe that? So you see, so you see that, that's how much he loves you, he cares about you. And so then we see the fourth reminder. Okay, we see the fourth reminder that Peter gave the people. He reminded them of who to trust. You see in verse 21, it says this, it says, through Christ, you have come to trust in God. You have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great 
glory. So, so through Christ, because of what he did in our lives, because of uh, uh, how we are redeemed, how he has set us free, how he has changed our life, then because of those things, then we're able to trust in God. I mean, does anybody have any trust issues? <laughs> like, God, I don't know who to trust. You can trust God, okay? I know that there's different people in life. Sometimes it's hard. I heard somebody say that trust is it, it's, it, it's a it's an, um, uh, hard thing to build, but it's an easy thing to tear down. You know, I know that sometimes can pe- people can hurt us. Some people can hurt our feelings, you know, d- different things, relationships, damage, all of those things. But there is one person, one relationship that will never fail you, never let you down, and you can put all of your trust in completely, 100%, saying, God, I trust you. And so, so that's what Peter's doing. He's reminding his people through Christ, because of what he's done, because you've been redeemed, you have come to put your trust in God. You have placed your faith and your hope in God. See, I don't know about you, but I am so thankful. You see, that's, that's the only place I put my faith and my hope. It's in God. I'm thankful for what he has done in my life. So I'm, uh, my faith, God, thank you. My hope, my faith, my trust, it's all in you. You see, and that's, that's what Peter was reminding them of tonight. And what we need to, again, understand to, to, to help put things again into a little bit more perspective. You see, Peter, he understood the significance of redemption. Peter understood the significance of the resurrection. You see, remember, Peter was there, like I, like I was telling you about, he was there. He saw the things. So, so he was there. He saw the agony. He saw the sorrow. He witnessed it with his own eyes. He saw the tears. He saw the pain. He saw the heartache. He saw all of those things. But you know what else Peter saw? Peter also saw the joy of the resurrection, right? I mean, the Bible even says that Peter, he ran to the tomb that next morning when Mary came back to say, you've got to see what happened. It says that Peter took off running towards the tomb because he wanted to see it with his own eyes. So Peter, with his own eyes, he knows the joy of the resurrection, of the resurrected Christ. He knows the joy of seeing Jesus again as they walked with him on the beach and and had breakfast. But you know what else he also has? He has the joy of having a restored relationship. Because you see, Peter wondered, man, because I denied Jesus, because I walked away, because I did those things, man, does he even love me anymore? Does he even care about me? You know, but I love it. When the angels sent Mary and way, said, they said, you need to go tell the disciples. They said specifically, but make sure you tell Peter too. Because you see, that's how much we are loved. You see, Peter was there, he witnessed it. His relationship was restored. His passion was restored. His joy was restored. Even to, he, he knows what it means to love and to be loved right? And because of everything that Christ did in his life, he lived his life with a passion. He lived his life on a mission. I mean, what are, that's what we're talking about in the book of Acts. Do you remember what we were just talking about here a couple of weeks ago in Acts, how, how Peter and John, because of, because of what they were walking through, and, and, and that, that man, that they healed that, that, that um, you know, lame man in front of them, that, that beggar right there in front of the gate. And, and remember, the, they called the cops on him and said, hey, arrest these guys you know, for what they were doing and the different things that they were saying. And they put them on trial, right? And they said, don't ever speak of this again or you will be persecuted. And what was Peter's response to it? Okay, you're right. Sorry. I did that once, I make sure, I'll make sure I won't do it away. Thanks guys for taking it easy on me. No, Peter with boldness, he stood there and said, I know what you're telling me, but I can't stop telling you about Jesus. I can't stop talking about what I've seen with my own eyes. I can't stop talking about the things I've seen, the things I've heard, the things I've witnessed. I've got to tell people about Jesus. There's no other option. I have one mission on this life because I've seen what Jesus can do. I've lived it out. I've experienced it with my own life. And because of that, I've only got one thing on this earth to do, and that's to tell other people about Jesus. So, if you call yourself a Christian, you've asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you have a purpose. You have a mission Just like Peter, our mission, we are saved to go and tell other people about the way, the truth, and the life. And that there is only one way to get to heaven. 
You see, you carry that message. It's changed your life. And if it hasn't yet, then tonight I'm gonna give you an opportunity to allow that message to change your life. But if it has changed your life, you have the mission to tell other people about it. You see, stories like Wells Crowther the, with, with the, that story in the, the South Tower, those stories, they inspire us, don't they? You know, there's many other stories that, that you see and read and different things and, and news, the good, the good stories in the news, that they, they, they inspire us. You know, but Peter's words, they remind us. They remind us of what our job is. They remind us what our purpose is. They remind us why we are here on this earth. You see, God created you, every single one of you. God created you to do something greater than living an empty life. I mean, aren't you tired of living an empty life? There's so much more for you out there. So if you're coming in here tonight wondering, is there more? The answer is yes. There is more. He created us to embrace the life that he died for us to have. And he created us for a purpose. You know, I, I remember when my life was so far out of whack. And I remember finding myself alone in a kayak on a lake, praying. Thinking of how I've walked away from different things and, and I found myself just sitting there praying and asking God, please use me again. God, please let my life have a purpose and a meaning. You know, I don't care, God, if you take away the different talents or skills that I thought I had. I don't care if you take those things away and give me new ones or, or you still wanna use the same ones you gave me a long time ago. God, I just wanna be used by you. I just want my life to mean something. And I remember sitting in that kayak and I just started singing that song, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender all. You see, there's something powerful that happens in your life when you say and understand his love, his grace for your life, and you come to a place in your life of when you say, Jesus, I surrender all. I surrender all to you. So tonight, if you asked, do I have a purpose? Is there a meaning for my life? The answer is yes. If you wonder, how do I get that joy and passion back? Fall back in love with the one who loved you first. He's not walked away. He's not turned his back on you. In fact, he's here tonight with his arms wide open saying, come back, come back. And if you're sitting here tonight or you're watching online and you've asked, does God love me? Is there forgiveness for my sins, the things that I have done? Once again, the answer is unequivocally yes. So tonight, if everybody could bow your heads and close your eyes with me. I'm gonna make this one call quick for one specific group of people and I'm gonna encourage you as a, as a whole to pray differently here in just a moment. But with every head bowed and eyes closed, you heard tonight the message, the gospel message, the truth of who you are, of a God who sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you. You see, others of us, we may have been reminded of it like Peter was reminding the readers in that time, but tonight maybe you're hearing it for the very first time. Or maybe it's not the very first time in your life, but maybe tonight 
you're finally going to allow yourself to get to the place to where I was and you say, God, I surrender. I surrender. So tonight, my question is simple for one group of people. If you're sitting here tonight and you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, to forgive you of your sins, to be the Lord of your life, or maybe you did a long time ago and since then you've really just kind of walked away. If you were honest with yourself, you walked away and, and if you were honest, you would say your relationship with Jesus is not at all what it would look like. In fact, people would even wonder if you're even a Christian. This question is for you as well. So tonight, is there anybody here tonight that would say, Pastor Tim, I'm done running. I want to accept the gift of grace and love. I understand the price that was paid for my life, the forgiveness of my sins. And tonight, I wanna ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If that's you, would you simply put your hand in the air? Nobody's looking around. I see that hand. I see that hand, that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Tonight, saying tonight, Pastor Tim, I'm done walking away. Tonight, I'm walking towards Jesus because I know what he's done for me. Anybody else? It's the most important de decision you'll ever make. The most important, I see that hand. The most important question you'll ever be asked. It's not about who you're gonna marry or where you're gonna live, what job you'll take. Those aren't the most important questions. The most important question is, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Anybody else here tonight that would simply just raise their hand and say, tonight, I wanna ask Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Well, tonight, if you raise, I see that hand. If you raised your hand, the Bible encourages us, if we, if we pray a prayer something like this, and if we mean it with all of our hearts and we're saved, we just say, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I understand now the price that was paid for me. Thank you for reminding me of that tonight. God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe that he is your son you sent here for me. And so tonight, Jesus, I'm asking you, forgive me of my sins. I don't wanna live that empty life anymore. I wanna live my life on purpose and mission for you. So tonight I ask you to be the Lord of my life in every single area. In Jesus' name, amen. Radiant Church, can you give it up for life change tonight? Thank you, Jesus. So tonight, what I wanna encourage you with this, as we move into the next moment of prayer, I wanna encourage you to do a couple of different things. Number one, we, we will have different prayer requests that are going on the screen that, that you can pray for of people that, that need healing, fi financial provision, all of these different kinds of needs that mean a lot to the Lord. And so we can lift those up to the Lord, but, but I also wanna encourage you to, if maybe you came in here tonight and, and you wondered what your purpose is, what your mission, and, and this is something that, that challenged you, you feel something inside of your heart that's burning. You see, what that is, is that's something, that's a faith thing, that's a challenge thing, that's a conviction thing that's beginning to grow inside of your heart. And if that thing's beginning to grow, then let's keep on watering it, okay? Let's keep on asking God, what do you wanna do? God, what is this thing you're growing inside of me? And so I'm gonna ask you this while we're praying. Maybe you need to find your own place to where you pray and say, God, what is my mission? What is my purpose? God, help me in my mission field, in my workplace, in my neighborhood, with my family. And maybe that looks like you praying in your seat. Maybe that looks like you coming down to the altar and saying, God, will you help me? Help me live my life on purpose and mission for you. Whatever that looks like for you, however you feel led to pray, Take the next few moments and pray and give these things and lift these things up to the Lord.